today's gospel passage, Jesus says, John 12, 24, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And then he goes on to say, those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. There's not a very easy saying to embrace. We all love life. We all love having the good things of life as well. We very often even turn to prayer so that we can get the good things of life. None of us like to suffer. None of us like to be that grain of wheat that falls and then produces fruits in abundance. We'd rather be the grain of wheat that has glory. The grain of wheat that reaches its potential. The grain of wheat that turns into a delicious dish that we can, we can savor or people can savor. That's, that's something that everyone would like. No one likes to suffer. This world is not about sacrificing. We speak of self-sacrifice, but you don't hear these, these, this terminology in the concepts of the world. No one wants to self-sacrifice. It's not a popular terminology. But Jesus teaches us today in the scriptures, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it will produce fruit. We've got to ask ourselves this question. How fruitful has my Christian life been? Not how good my Christian life has been. How fruitful has my Christian life been? Every disciple is called to bear fruit. When Jesus calls disciples, when he invites a disciple, there is always the intention, you are meant to bear fruit. That's why in John chapter 15, verse 16, he'll tell us, you did not choose me, I chose you, and it doesn't end with a full stop. There is a little end to it when the Lord says, I chose you so that you will go and bear, bear fruit. So it's not about how good a Christian life I've led. Because very often we stop at that. I'm a good Christian. I go for Sunday Mass, I'm a good Christian. I might go for everyday Mass. And I think I'm a little better than a good Christian. I'm, I'm doing all the Lenten observances. I, I, I go for confession regularly. I pray my rosary, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my Lenten fast, I'm, I'm celebrating all the feasts correctly, I celebrate the Mass well, I kneel down and I pray. I'm a good, better, best Christian. But that's not the question here. The question is, am I a fruitful disciple? Am I producing fruits? Or am I happy just being a good Christian? Because very often that's the choice we make. But to be a disciple that produces fruit, it will require total self-sacrifice. You will have to die. When Jesus says this, the very next statement that the Lord makes is, Father, save me from this hour. Is that what I should say? He says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. So what Jesus is speaking about is his death. And he says, and he acknowledges, my soul is, it is troubled. My soul is troubled. We all know at the Garden of Gethsemane, what does Jesus say? If it's possible... Take this cup of suffering away from me. Is Jesus, um, um, 
I'll put it in inverted commas, is because we, we cannot actually term Jesus in those terms. Is Jesus, in our terms, is Jesus a good Christian? I'm just putting it, you can't call Jesus a Christian as such. I mean, you and I can be a Christian, we can't call Jesus a Christian. But in our terminologies, so Jesus uh, did everything he needed to do. Is Jesus a good Christian in our terminologies? Yes, Jesus is a good Christian. But when Jesus says, my soul is troubled, and Jesus says in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me, it means there's something more than just good. There's something about producing fruit. A disciple has to produce fruit. And this is why when Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Is that what I should say? He says, no. It is for this reason that I have come. I have come to die. It's not the Australian to die. Okay. So. The Australian to die is today. <laughs> today becomes to die. But Jesus says, I have come, I've come precisely to die. For only when I die is my father glorified because then we go back to what Jesus said. Only then if I lose my life will then I bear fruit. We all know, for all of us, we are very clear in, my, in our minds. Did Jesus have to die? Yes. We are very clear about that. Did Jesus have to die? Yes, Jesus had to die. Do you have to die? We are all clear when it comes to Jesus. Jesus has to die. Only then is there salvation. But when it comes to us, I'll be a good Christian. But I don't need to produce fruits. So it's good to ask ourselves today, what kind of a Christian am I? Am I producing any fruits? Has my life of 10 years as a Christian, 20 years as a Christian, 45 years as a Christian, 60, 80, 90 or whatever it is, how much of fruit have I produced? Because this is where it will all boil down to unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, and we don't want to sacrifice ourselves. We find it hard because the world doesn't, doesn't think very highly of a sacrifice. It's all about how I can build myself, even very often our very faith itself is about building ourselves. Let me just kind of put this in perspective. This is supposed to be a healing mass, right? And why are we here? Because we, we hope we will get healed. So suddenly we put all this in perspective and see, we start trying to understand and, and seeing what kind of a disciple am I? What do I want from my discipleship? What have I even desired from my discipleship? Have I ever in my Christian journey desired that I need to bear fruits, and it's not an option. The Lord says, it is a command. You have to bear fruit. It is not about you being a good Christian. It's not about you just going for the sacraments. It's not about you and I just coming to church. It's not about you and I just celebrating a Sunday Mass. It's about asking ourselves, how much have I produced fruits? Because unless and until I die to myself, I don't think I'm ever, ever going to produce fruits. Take, take whatever happened in the, in the scriptures. We, we go into the Old Testament. Take the prophets. There was the time when Isaiah was called. In, in Isaiah chapter 6, the word tells us, the Lord says, I've seen my people and the sin that they are in and they are in destruction and I need someone to go for me. Who will go for me? What does Isaiah say? He says, 
Lord, I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Woe is me, I'm lost, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst unclean people. The Lord says, don't worry, I will send the angel. He will take that burning charcoal and he will touch your lips. And his lips were touched, and then he was purified. And then the Lord again said, whom shall I send? Who will go for me? And Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. I will go for you. It's amazing. Have you ever read the book of Hosea? Prophet Hosea? You should read that. I've always read that book and I've, I've thought if there's a prophet whose life was like a puppet in the hands of God. You know, when you, when you speak of this whole concept of the porter and the clay, there's no prophet whose life is so perfectly, whose, whose life so perfectly brings out this concept of the porter and the clay. Just, just listen to this. Hosea chapter 1, verse 2. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of Hordom, and have children of Hordom. For the land commits great Hordom for, for, by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. God tells him, you get married to a whore. And you bear children of that hoden. You know why that is? Because God wants to make an example of the people. About how they are, they are, they are, they are becoming idolaters. They are, they are, are whoring themselves to different idols. So what does God do? God tells Hosea, your your very life, your very marriage is now going to be a prophecy. And that's a self-sacrifice. That's called dying to the self. He doesn't think twice. We have them all in the scriptures. You have, you have prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah is called the prophet of doom. He's called the prophet of doom. Because wherever he goes, he's proclaiming things about destruction. Do you think anybody liked him? Nobody liked him. Do you think everyone liked prophet Elijah and Elisha? No, nobody liked them. Why do you think Jonah ran away when God asked Jonah, go to the people of Nineveh? Why did Jonah run away? Because Jonah is not bothered. He thinks to himself... Why should I go and sacrifice my life for this set of people who are committing sin and ultimately I will be the one who will be targeted by them? Jonah doesn't want to do it. Though ultimately God forces him and he kind of gets it done. Now all these prophets, are they important? Today, today we look at these heroes of the scriptures and we speak about them and we preach about them. They are people who sacrifice themselves. Go into the New Testament. The Blessed Mother said yes. What was she saying yes to? She is saying yes to a self-sacrifice. After that, nothing is about herself. It is her pain, it's her suffering, it's her, it's her sadness and her grief when she holds her beloved son in her arms as, as he's dead on that cross, and yet she says, it is a yes. I will sacrifice myself. What does St. Joseph do? St. Joseph, the moment he decided, I will get rid of this woman quietly and silently, and then he goes to sleep, and he gets the dream, and God tells him, Joseph, take this woman. She has conceived of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph then stands the next day to tell the Lord, here I will die to myself. Those are the ones who started bearing fruit. Ask ourselves, what kind of fruits do I bear? In my Christian discipleship, how much am I ready to, to die to myself, to answer God's call? If God calls me today, not just to be a good Christian, but to produce fruits, if God calls me today, 
Will I be able to say, yes, Lord, here I am? Can you, if, if you are a young boy, there are youngsters over here, if you are a young boy and the Lord, Lord thinks of telling you, will you join, will you be a priest for me? Will you even think to yourself, Lord, not me, let it be the next person. We all have this, this amazing prayer we make for priests and then every day in the morning we have the prayer for vocations. When we pray for vocations, if you are a young boy, can you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, if it is me, tell me. Are there young women over here who, who if the Lord would ask you, could you be my bride and offer yourself to religious life? Can you at some point in your heart pray and say, Lord, here, send me if it is I. Those of you who are maybe married, but you are given a call, maybe a call to intercede, maybe day and night to pray. Are you able to tell the Lord, Lord, if it is me, tell me and I will wake up and I will pray. If it is at two in the morning, if it's at three in the morning, I will wake up and I will pray. If you're calling me to reach out to the poor and the needy and the brokenhearted, tell me, Lord, and I will say yes to it. When are we going to produce fruits? Are we happy just to be good Christians? When are we going to produce fruits? Today we speak about all these heroes of our faith. We speak about Maximilian Kolbe who offered his life. When will the next Maximilian Kolbe come? We speak about all those saints who suffered and offered themselves and sacrificed themselves. Where will the next saint come from? Are we, a look, are we looking into someone else's home and hoping it'll come from there? Look into our house. Our house. I'm not just saying some of us are even smart. We look into our house and look at our brother and say, it's you, not me. Our house. Lord, where am I going to produce fruit? When am I going to produce fruit? That is where we are supposed to judge our own, our own spiritual journey, our discipleship to be able to sacrifice. And it will be a sacrifice. It will definitely be a sacrifice. It will ask a lot out of you. It will not be enough just to, just to come for a Sunday Mass. It will not be enough just to come for a daily Mass. It will not just be enough to say a rosary and do the bare minimum to be just a nominal Christian. But to be able to look and tell the Lord, Lord, I want to be a disciple that bears fruit. Because one day you and I will knock at the gates of the kingdom of heaven and the Lord will ask us, what fruits have you borne? Because I chose you to bear fruit. How much have you offered your life for your brother, your sister? How much have you offered your life for your brother, your sister? The scripture tells us this in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. Are we happy about that? Yes or no? I can't even hear you. Now you're, you're on this defensive mode, isn't it? If it was uh, you know, all the good things, it's a healing mass. What's wrong with him? He, he better say good things. So is this, is this fine with you? We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. Good? Blessed? Fruitful? Good. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers, our sisters. If I can treasure this, and if I hold this of great value, how can I not respond to a call that tells me, can you now die to yourself and lay down your life for your brother, your sister? How much more of our life do we have? Are we going to wait and wait and wait? How much more of your life do you have? The only thing we have of certainty is today. There is no tomorrow. That's the only certainty that we have. Today can we tell the Lord, if Jesus tells us, today I'm calling you. Not to look at the Lord and say, Lord, maybe tomorrow or some other time. That's why I find it 
Uh, I find it a bit offensive when people wait for retirement to, to start doing some kind of ministry. When I retire, I'll help. When you're healthy, you look after yourself. When you're retired and you're old and, and, and you can't do anything, then you'll give the rest to God. Tell the Lord today. Today make me fruitful. Today I'll take time out of my, my packed schedule. I'll take time to bear fruit. I'll take time to die for my brother, my sister. I'll make that effort. Because I just don't want to be a nominal Christian who's just a good Christian who came to this earth, walked on this earth and went back just being a good Christian. I want to die here so that I bear fruit in abundance. That is our call. That should be our response. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, give us the grace. If you're calling us, if you're calling us, some of us who are youngsters to religious life, to the priesthood, to the convents, give us the grace to say, Lord, if it is your will, like prophet Isaiah, I say, here I am, Lord. Lord, if it is your will that you're calling me to a ministry, tell me, Lord, and convince my heart. There is no tomorrow for me, Jesus. It's tonight. Tell me tonight. What is it that you want me to do for you? Do you want me to go out to feed the poor? Do you want me to go out and touch people's lives? Do you want me to go out and share the gospel? Do you want me to take time out of my busy schedule and spend time with people who need to know you and who need to understand that they are loved? Lord Jesus, I don't just want to go through life being just a good Christian. I'm a disciple, Lord. I want to wear fruit. If I don't have a tomorrow, then I should be satisfied when I close my eyes for that one last time, thinking to myself, at least today, I have borne fruit worthy of the Lord. Let me die to myself. Sacrifice myself. It will not be a popular option, but it is a godly option. Amen.